words. They don't just communicate thoughts. They reveal the hidden things in our hearts. They don't just communicate ideas. They create worlds. The mouth and the words we say are a creative force that is not only used all the time, but everywhere we go. Our words are the very essence of how the Creator made us. Join us as we discover the essence of man and the power of speech. Hey, welcome to the Essence of Man and the Power of Speech, Day 87, and we're talking about how despair opens the door. Now, what do we mean by that? Many people <clears throat> look at despair as a, a poor they mentality or poor me mentality, and we tend to have sympathy, okay, uh, or pity towards one in despair. Yet despair can lead to many conversations of evil speech. Let me give you an example. When people are in despair, they many times don't talk about the possibility of what can happen in order for things to change. What they end up doing is complaining about other people why they don't have what they have. It's so-and-so's fault, and it's this person. And you start hearing all this vile talking. I remember one time a, a gentleman came up to me and he said, um, he, he was bad-mouthing this other minister. And I'm listening to this, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. First of all, I don't, I don't know anything about your situation. And what he was wanting was something to eat. Well, we just went ahead and gave him something to eat. I didn't want to hear his despair and him talking about the other guy. Number one, that's evil speech. Um, let me give you an example. Turn If you go to Matthew 15, okay? Then Jesus, uh, verse 21 says, Then Jesus uh, hence departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the, of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. Now when she says have mercy, she's not crying out in despair and, and, and sympathy. She's, she's asking for Jesus to show her mercy because, after all, she's not a covenant person. But he answered not a word, and his disciples came and, and, and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, Am I not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel? Then came and she worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Key difference. She worshipped him and said, Lord, help me. She wasn't crying out of despair and saying, don't you see my situation? Don't you see my daughter? Don't you see this? She wasn't doing that. No, she, what she did was she didn't act in despair. She acted in worship. She changed her speech. It was not criticizing Christ for him not doing anything or the disciples for wanting to send her away. All she did was she changed her speech to begin to worship him. Notice what happened. Then came she and she worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, Is it not meet to, to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs? In other words, I'm sent to the lost sheep of house of Israel. I've got to deal with them. And notice what she says. She doesn't complain. She doesn't say, Lord, don't you understand how bad things are? Don't you understand how bad this is? Don't you see what's going on? Don't you have any sympathy towards me? Don't you see my circumstances? She didn't say that at all. What she said, truth, Lord, you're right. Let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. She didn't exaggerate how bad her situation was. But she said, Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs from the master's table. She said, I'm not asking for a lot. She said, I know, I'm, I know I'm not a covenant person, not worthy, but Lord, even your crumb is able to take care of my situation. And as a result, Jesus said, O woman, great is thy faith, not great is thy despair. 
Not great was your complaining that got me to move. It was her faith that got her what she needed for her daughter. Not despair. And, and so sometimes we have a tendency to want, we think sympathy is going to move people. And despair can lead to many conversations of evil speech. Instead of proper prayer or uh, thanksgiving, uh, we tend to complain and murmur and doubt and think we're conning God by trying to convince Him how bad our situation is. Don't slander your inheritance with evil speech. In other words, evil speech is not going to make God move. Uh, trying to persuade people with despair doesn't make things move or change. Confidence and faith in God is what changes things. Trust, humility, those things, that's what gets God's attention. Despair only opens the door for more destruction like we read in Ecclesiastes. It causes our flesh to sin. And we say to the angels, you judged us in error. <laughs> and it makes God angry and the works of our hands that are bad even end up getting worse. This is a huge problem. The woman that went after Jesus did not allow despair to come out of her mouth. Don't confuse mercy and despair. Don't, don't confuse somebody who needs mercy and despair. They don't, they're not the same. Mercy, asking God for mercy, is not the same thing. Despair will bring evil speech. Mercy will glorify the Creator. There's a huge difference. When you're, when you're asking for mercy, you're going to the Creator because you understand you need the Creator. Despair, on the other hand, can sound like a con man trying to convince the Creator. Huge difference. Huge difference. Mercy will not blame other people when you go to the Creator. When you're seeking mercy, you will not blame other people. Despair, on the other hand, says, it's this person's fault. Don't you see my situation? You did this to me. Why don't you help me out? See, that's, that, 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 that just gets crazy. Don't even like even to give an example of that. So, don't let despair open the door to evil speech. Amen. Hey, we'll see you next time on The Essence of Man and the Power of Speech. Have a good one.